All right, all right, all right. Greetings and welcome back once again. This is Amuna, and I pray everybody is doing well. Look, we are live. This is not pre-recorded, so we in the place. I pray everybody's doing well. Good night, wherever you are. And shout out to everybody who's already in the spot. I was in the middle of cutting a video and some time escaped from me, but I said I wanted to come on here real quick. This light kind of bright, don't it? Um, shout out to all the new subscribers, all the people who've been here from day one. You know what I mean? Um, but I wanted to uh, speak really quickly on why I, I decided to go live. The first reason is, A, shout out to everybody who recently found the channel, enjoying the content. You know, thank you so much. Uh, love it. Yeah, thank you so much for the positive feedback and all the information. I'm reading it. I'm watching it. You know what I mean? And I'm learning and growing. The second reason I came on here is to speak to one of the videos that I put up, one of the first ones, the one with Taki, the baby father drama. Um, I, someone reached out to me from the family. They said they were from the family and said that that's an Owen Stewart, but that's not the same Owen Stewart from the story. And so I replaced the picture and I put it up on a community board because we want to be correct. Right. And so you can read more about that on the community board. That leads me to um, some of the comments that we're getting. I think a lot of people may be uh, misinformed about why I'm doing what I'm doing. A, I love reading. I love li literature, as you can tell. Right. Um also, these are books that were written. So a lot of the people are going to the movie, they, the resurgence of information and desire to know about Bob Marley through the movie, $70 million to create this movie, years in the making. So here we are having a, a conversation, but a lot of us are not as informed. I wasn't either, right? And so I think that by reading this book and bringing my personality to the conversation, we can engage together and be informed. So that is what this is about. This is not about, uh, like some people are saying, gossip. How am I gossiping if the people wrote it about themselves, right? So with that said, uh, definitely stay tuned because there's way more information that I'm going to go into after the Bob Marley section. People want to know whatever happened to Taki. Um, also, we're going to go into uh, Sadella Marley because I think her, con her, her story is very important to this narrative because it kind of shapes Bob Marley's experience. And a lot of the things that he does in his life, they're not an anomaly, right? They're not one-offs, right? Um, they, they help us to kind of understand his plight as well as our own plight. Marsha, I'm going to read some of the comments here. And uh, I don't know if I can bring people up on this particular YouTube here. Let me see if I can. I don't think I can, but if you want to say anything, if you have anything to share, then we, you can ask your questions and then definitely we'll go into that. And then I'll go back to editing. So let me start from the top. Let me start to, from the top here. I enjoy your storytelling. Can't wait to see how it all unfolds. Definitely. This next one that's coming up is going to be about tell her you're my sister. All right. Tell them you're my sister. And so it goes into the fact that Bob Marley um, and Reed to have this running agreement that they're sisters and brothers. Right. Sir Norville is also somebody that I have gathered some information on, not only just from Sadella's books, but some dispelling some myths. One of them, I guess I could do spoiler alert. It's already on the channel that um, they were actually married. There are a lot of people who were like, no, they weren't married. And they were actually married. I put that up on the channel. I found their wedding certificate from Jamaica in St. Anne. It tells you exactly where they were married. It tells you when they were married. It tells you who his father was and who his mother was, right? And not and her father. And so through that, I also was able to get a little more information about um, Omaria, which is Sadella's father. And Sadella says a lot of things about her father, which shows you that Bob Marley's life, he saw his grandfather with a lot of women. Um, according to his mother, she had over 30. He had over 30 women. And he actually impregnated three sisters 11 times. I have that video already up on the channel, so it's not really a spoiler alert. He impregnated three women. This is Bob Marley's grandfather. Impregnated three sisters 11 times. So Bob is seeing, seeing this, right? Um, and it's very interesting to see how it later on plays out. People think it's the Rasta thing that didn't know. He was already seeing this type of behavior before. We see Marsha saying, your breakdown of the story of Rita and Bob is amazing and has me tuned in. Appreciate you. I appreciate you too, sis. And your amazing storytelling. Love your vibes. You don't know already. We're there already. It's all love. It's, it's not 
in an effort to, you know, scandal people or be mean spirited, but history has within it some jewels. It has wisdom. It has things that can teach us lessons. So Rita does look like Sedella. I agree, TC Candles. When I saw the young Rita and I saw Sedella, you can see that Bob saw something in her that um, may not necessarily have uh, translated as he continued to grow. But when he first met her, you can definitely see Sedella and Rita looking alike. Any questions or comments? What's going on, Earl? How are you, how you doing? Welcome to the conversation. Any questions or comments about anything that I've gone over thus far? Um, I just wanted to touch on that, show my face live and let you know something is coming. If I upload it before tonight, then you'll be able to see it. Um, if not, then it, you'll see it in the morning. So if there's, is there any more questions or comments that you have? If not, I'm not going to hold you too long. I'm going to go back to the editing. This particular one doesn't necessarily allow you to bring people up. Wait, hold up. Let me see. If it did, Cindy's privated her. <gasps> she did. She did. I didn't know. I, I'm not following her. She privated her Instagram. Y'all kind of went in on Cindy, though. <laughs> I, I think that's what got my attention, really. I started reading the book because I like to be informed. So before the movie came out, I was like, you know what? Let me go read the book and think. And then I saw the whole thing blow up with Cindy. And I'm like, what is really going on here? So when I started to read the book, I was like, you know what? Let me bring this and have conversations about this. And um, I think the way in which she did it, and you guys can let me know, they did it for public consumption. The way in which she did it, it didn't sit necessarily right with the people. And that's probably why she got the response that she got, which is like calling up, knowing that you were the person that he had on the side in between his family and then calling all the places where y'all went and visited Al and I Mada house. And later on, we read that his mother was like, Cindy was in the house when cocked up, you know, with Bob and then Rita bring the phone. Um, I'm coming with the children and Bob hop out of the bed. You know what I mean? So, when, when you say things like that and do things like that, I mean, how do you expect the people to react? I don't know. I don't know. The last reel I shared on Facebook. What, Earl? You, yeah, you, maybe you need to tag me on Facebook. <laughs> I've learned so much while feeling as if I'm talking to a sister or a friend. And shout out to you, Andrea, for real. You know, it, it, I've done book clubs before. And over time, you just know how to engage the material so that it people can retain it. So that when we go up and have a conversation, you know, people always, yeah, me, you're set. You can at least refer to something that the person themselves wrote. And then you take it with a grain of salt. Can I send you pics of Taki? Oh, so you do have Taki. Nasima, handsome and looks like Bob. I, I saw one picture that I saw that Rita had put on her. I don't know if it's her or whoever's running her page. I saw an older picture of him. Um, so if you have other picture of him, definitely. You guys can hit me up on Instagram as well, Amuna Yisrael over there. You could definitely send stuff. Marsha says, in Cindy's defense, as you said, from the mother's book, Bob never made women aware he was married to Rita. And that's what, this is what all of this is about. All of this conversation is about how, and this video that's coming out really speaks to what Marsha is saying. They set the tone, Rita included, because she was complicit. My lamp, I got drop. Lamp, you better not drop lamp. My lamp, I got drop. Um, he was complicit and she was complicit in this whole, tell them you're my sister, Abraham and Sarah kind of situation. Bob was a man who read his Bible. That's the biblical narrative, you know, going into Babylon and then telling the people that you are not in a relationship so that you can get some type of financial advancement. That is a biblical narrative that he took out of the Bible and applied it to his life. And it backfired because how many times are you going to tell people that this is my sister? This is my sister. But in private, you know, say you're my wife. Like, you know, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? I will notice that sometimes when it gets late at night, I get a little less jokey because then, you know, I get a little sleepy. But for real, though, what are we doing? She turned off the comments. <laughs> the internet is kind of, okay, let me see. I said, no. What is, what will you, what is, yeah, let me see. It says here, Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy suffers from side chick syndrome. Ignore her. I mean, it not look good. It look away. I mean, as as a younger generation, seeing even even as her son seeing it, I don't really know. We don't know how they really feel, but seeing it, it did seem to us that it was some subbing going on between the two factions, right? And then the people in the community is picking it up, like, hey, what's going on here? Instead of you know, why did you go into such depth? 
And you're married, if I'm not mistaken. You're married. So how did that make your husband feel while you're talking about all of the places and the exploits? And the, I think it was not done necessarily in the best, the best of taste. How they know he wasn't married. That's crazy. Well, he went around telling people he wasn't married. He said, Bob, you ever married? Never. <laughs> like, wow, Bob, you've said that with your whole chance. Never, I'm a never married. What do you mean? Rita Marley, no man. Rita Marley, name Rita Marley because she sing with me. Rita Marley named Rita Marley because she sings with you? Okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, it says, what's the next episode you're telling is engaging and fun? Plus, you're Jamaican. Yeah, so the next episode is tell her you're my sister or something. I think I named it something like that. I'm literally just finishing cutting it right now. Um, and so that's the next episode. And we're going to kind of go into... Bob Marley, essentially, and Rita, they, they come with the small children. Ziggy is born now, and they're coming to Delaware again. And so they find themselves in America once again, and they're trying to make their way into the music business. And so that is going to be the next episode. I'm happy, you, I'm happy you made it here as well. I'm happy you made it. And that's my point. Nasima, you hit the nail on the head. Bob Marley was a flawed man, as we all are. As we all are. He was a human, as we all are. He came with baggage, as we all do. He came with pre-programming. He didn't know his father. Um, he he lived in a community where he was an out an outcast. You know, Bunny Whaler says this on the documentary. So he has a whole lot of things that he was a complex person, as we all are. And he's navigating this, trying to get out of poverty, trying to find an identity, trying to find love. He has an insecure attachment style. One minute his mom is there, the next minute his mom is here. So he, all you have to consider all these things when you're talking about looking at all of this great music. A lot of the music came from pain. A lot of the greatest musicians, their music or artists come from pain. And we fall in love with the music and how it makes us feel and not realizing that this person behind it is struggling with their own internal angst. Let's see. The Bible says adultery is bad. And that's why I'm not caping for Rita either. Because even though Rita after many, many years is hearing, yo, she'll tell me system, we're not married. You know what you know, right? And so that's the complexity of it. That's where people want to either or and make it polarity and be like, Rita, no good and Bob good. And it's not, I don't think it's black or white. I think this is very much gray area that they created this situation for themselves in the world, for the world to see, right? It's not like they did it in their closet and we over there in a, a peep and I didn't win that say, I went them over there though. Like they brought it to the world stage and they put it for everybody to see. And that's kind of what we're doing, right? He was like in an interview, I'm not married. He definitely said that. He definitely said that. Let's see here. And I played that in the last video. He said, married, never, never married. <laughs> Yo, the, the Rasta voice for me is always the funniest. Uh, let me see here. What's the next thing? I think Bob was hurt. Rita cheated, so he denied her. But according to his mother, according to his mother Booker's book, he's been behaving this way. You know, especially they're young. He's 21 when he marries. He has this responsibility. He he wants to hang out with man and man them. Him friend them a studio. Him want bone ganja. Him want sit on and chat and do the most thing. A, a teenager, young adult will want to do, and now they have real time responsibilities. So I'm th I think that's what is really, uh, and things didn't necessarily go as they wanted to, because according to the narrative, he was supposed to come to America and send for her to come to America. So when they end up back in Jamaica at Auntie House, it doesn't make for the best. You know, it doesn't make for the best. What is wrong with this thing here? Let's see. Upset Bob was is a legend. I love his music. However, he chose to live his life again. Thanks for decoding these books. Yeah, we have to separate the two. Although they're intertwined because one feeds the other, it's okay to look at the human being and also like the music. I mean, people struggle with that as well with R. Kelly. They like the music, but the person is questionable. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of artists, you like Michael Jackson, but what was he doing? We see that all throughout um, history with artists. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, David within the Bible was one of the most complex people. He was a musician. If we think about David in modern times, he was a musician. All of the Psalms is his art. That's the words to lyrics to music, right? But he was also a complex human being and that's, and that's okay. 
it, we should give ourselves permission to explore these things again so that we can learn. You know, what's funny. I've been saying to, to my friends and family behind the scenes, they're like some of some sorry, shout out to some of the subscribers. They're like, or not. Uh, the person dead and gone long time. We are taught about them for you. you left it alone. And I'm like, everybody you read about in the Bible is dead and gone. Everybody in history class is dead and gone. Everybody from the Roman Empire is dead and gone. But we go to history. When you go to college, you go to university, you study these things. How come we don't feel so compelled to be like, fire about the system and I read about nobody when they are? That don't make no sense, right? That don't make no sense. To me, it don't make no sense, but okay. Uh, yep, these videos show that he was human and 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 like we all are. Um, his family on his father's side denied him too. The father's side, okay, I'm going to give a little bit of insight from what the mother said on the father's side. I'm definitely going to do a video, but according to what his mother was saying, I'm going to have to read that one. Yeah. Trust me, when we read that one. Yeah. But according to what the mother was saying, I forgot to do my quotations. There was a bit of a relationship <laughs> between she and him and the father. It wasn't just, oh, I would a young girl and then jump on her. So we're going to explore that relationship after I finished it. I got like one more Bob video to do. And we're going to explore that relationship because, okay, interesting. Where are you from? I'm, you know where I'm from? Anybody guess where I'm from? Can anybody guess where I'm from? Drop it in the comment section. Where do you think I was born? Because everybody keeps commenting. How are you able to move through the accent so fluidly? Can you guess where I was born? And then I'll tell you in a little bit. Nobody talks about Esther Anderson. Here's the thing. Earl, I have, I actually tried to find a documentary that Esther Anderson did, um, The Making of the Legend. And it's not on, it was streaming on Amazon, gone. Streaming on um, Apple Music, gone. I cannot find this thing anywhere. I thought I found it. And I, I wanted that documentary because as you said, the Esther Anderson, I want to call her character. She's still alive. So shout out to her. Um, she comes in at the time where, where he just gets into Island Record. So she says that she's there with the shaping of the legend. And I think it's important to look at what he was into before he became this iconic figure. The last time I seen the documentary, it was like for 50 pounds from England. I'm like, yo, did somebody put a ban on this documentary in America? Because where is it? Has anybody seen that documentary? Let me know because I'm still looking. It says Bob has some internal issues and he took them out on Rita as the closest person. She looked like his mother who abandoned him. And I think there's some there's some validity to that. I mean, just looking at the fact that at, at the end, his mother says he when he was dying, his mother says she he, he asked her about his father in fleeting because he was in so much pain at the end of his life that he, you know, he was in and out. And his mother says, according to her, he asked about the father and that he was in so much pain that he didn't get to receive the answer. But I think for his life, he was searching for these, those answers of the missing pieces. He, it's, in, it's important to know that the people who are there equally affect us as much as the people who are not there. And so what I did find, and, I, and I'm going to do the documentary style video on the parents. People say his father was born in England. His father was born in Clarendon. According and his father had a brother Richard who was also born in Clarendon, and their parent, his father is the one who came from England. So Bob Marley's grandfather, according to the records, came from England, and his name was Albert. Albert Marley. But weirdly, when he comes to Jamaica, he names himself Robert Marley. Now, this Robert name repeats in his family line like about four or five Roberts, which is very interesting. Because am I going to spoil it now? The, there is a connection between naming these children Robert and what happens to them. So I'm not going to spoil it now. And for that, I have like document, document. You understand? Somebody told me, said, no, the document fake. I'm like, I don't got that type of time. I'm, you know, contrary to proper belief, I do have other things to do. And put my glasses on because the light is shining on my eye a little bit. I do have other things to do. But yes, I have some documentation on that. Uh, let's see. Rita loved him so much. She didn't whatever to make him happy. I think Rita was equally um, is because she's still alive. So shout out to her equally as uh, conflicted with things, meaning according to her, her mother left her and her young, her brother and married somebody else. And she, she left them because maybe they weren't of the right skin tone or whatever the case may be. A lot of times in the book, you hear that she's not so reassured. 
She needs she needs the things that he's saying to make her feel okay. Her father goes to England, who she's kind of like this daddy's girl, and her father goes to England to look for better work. And this is how she's with auntie. So Rita's also looking for that comfort. She's also looking for that acceptance. She's also looking to kind of make her way. So these two, they're kind of two parts of the same whole. And one of the videos I said is trauma bond because trauma bond is when you connect with somebody based on your deficits, based on your lack, based on your trauma. Right. And if you read how they met and how she describes him, you see a bit of that. And then after that, after the honeymoon phase, there's a lot of tumultuous experiences in the relationship because of the way you're bonded. It's not always the love that we're talking about. It, it comes in, in, in our deficits oftentimes and the things that we need from other people that they can't necessarily provide. So when Rob is abandoning her, it triggers her because she was abandoned right, by her first caretakers. Right. Let's continue. They're going to be like, Amuna, I never know so you can't get so deep. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, you got Esther Anderson clips on my channel. Chris Black will battle her for the rights of the Kevin on Kevin McDonald 2012 movie. Okay, okay, okay. Because her movie, I think, came out like the year before. And then the Marley movie tried to eclipse it. And now I can't seem to find that movie. Why? Because Bob was a very younger Bob in that movie. In the documentary, it's not even a movie. What she said happened was there were some old clips of him that got taken, and then 30 years later they show up, and then and it's all of this very old footage from 73, 72, them where they're 73, 74, that um shows a very different person. And I think it was interesting for this story. The Marley Jeans, they're definitely strong. I think they're trauma bonded. I mean, I could be wrong. Somebody else could tell me. But that, based on the definition of trauma bond, I actually have a book back here called The Betrayal Bond. And in there, it goes into trauma bonding and tell you what it looks like and how to identify it. And some of these relationships that we get in, even as children or young adults, we're like, oh, I love the person so much. Nah, it, it was something else. It was something else. We the of a woman of her generation. I think people have a tendency of being harsh on her. I think so too. I think based on what she was given, Based on what she was given, uh, you see it on Apple TV, Amy? Because I went over there and I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Is it, is it there? I'm going to try to look again because I've been looking up and down and all around for that documentary. She did mention her mother took her lighter skin brother. Correct. She did mention that. So you see there is a color. The fact that this brown skin guy, which would be Bob, is think she's pretty, think she's desirable. Sometimes when we don't have the highest self-esteem and somebody who, you know, thinks of, thinks that of us, then we 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 lean into that. You understand me? I say, and a lot of times in the book, you can even hear it in the way she's looking for this reassurance that he wasn't necessarily able to give to her, especially when he started chasing music, Mary Jane. He started chasing the woman on them. So it, it she begins to fade in the background. So whatever part that she now has to play to continue to be relevant, you know. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the smile. <laughs> Psychologist, you know, I, I really just study a lot of this stuff for my own healing and my own, you know, so when I look at a lot of these stories, I look through that lens. When you hear me making comments, I'm not trying to be facetious or funny. I'm looking through it through a lens. Like all this stuff behind me is not for props. You know what I mean? I've been studying for a while to really understand, especially in Caribbean culture especially coming from post-traumatic slave spaces, coming from um, after colonialism, right? There's a lot of things that we, the people, the children of the people, we we embody because of that was our experiences. Like having the one bag of woman them, walk and I breed up people and I left them. Um, our mentalities, our thought process, how we look at relationships, all of that is our inheritance, because you can have good and bad inheritance. All of those things are the things that we've been given. And my my thing was, how do I move through this so that we can move to a space of healing? You know what I mean? So it's crazy. Only one pic of Norville exists. Yeah, it's only one pic of him. And that pic, according to them, as we've heard, is that he was a surveyor um, for the for for England and that he was there surveying the lands and this is why he was up and down on the horse. One thing I can say about the book and the movie as well is that according to Sadella, which would be Bob's mother, um, he stopped riding the horse because he had bosun, he had a hernia and that he wanted to leave that job of riding the horse and go to Kingston. So after they married, I'll just say this part, much like Bob, after Sadella married because she was pregnant, 
he leaves the next the in like an, a short period of time, like two days later, just like Bob married Rita and left. Um, Norval married her and left and went to Kingston. So I'll say that is a parallel that happened in his mother's life. And, and I said in the video, I'll speak to why she was probably like, you don't have to marry somebody because they're pregnant because she was married because she was pregnant. And when we read that story, y'all gonna pop up. Cause I was like, yo, Norval, Norval was doing the most, the absolute most, um, Give thanks, um, whiskey films. Give thanks. Rita should have divorced him. I'm sad she went through all that. According to her, she tried to divorce him. Bob never wanted to divorce her. Gosh, according to her, she asked for divorce and him never wanted to divorce. So Earl said, Leo and, and Aquarius will crash. I clash them, crash. I cl a song clash them. Did I play it? Bob was out of Rita's league. Um, like I said, emotionally, you may look at and you may you have to check a person on an energetic level, right? Sometimes you would look at two people and I say, no, sir, them two people that no match. But energetically, that's why you see it's beyond what we can see physically or or phys or talent, but energetically they're on the same this on the same level. And at the time that they met, I think energetically they were on the same level. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. That's the that's good the way you break things down. Give thanks, give thanks, all praises. To the creator for that. Uh Bob grandfather had a bugger woman. He got that from Sibella. Yeah, I agree. He had <laughs> if we read that part there. Like I said, after I finish this Bob situation, like this is the, I think this video. Is, people keep asking what ever happened to um Taki. I don't know how much more it goes into Taki, but I think I have one more video when uh about the whole throwing the wedding rings in the water thing. Because I saw an open letter from Bunny Whaler. I have not been able to verify that. I need to verify. And you guys let me know if you verified, like, if Bunny Whaler really is the source of that open letter, right? So there's an open letter from him that he talks about a situation. And he didn't seem like he liked Rita at all. But there was something he said in that letter that was also in the book. And so I wanted to cross-reference the two. And I tried to get at least two witnesses, as you see. That's why I'm reading Rita and the mother at the same time. Because the Bible tells you, Two or three witnesses is a matter established. That's why you see me getting more than one witness on the situation. It says, was Bob the only child for his father? To my understanding, he has other half siblings, one of which Constance, I believe her name was, and another man, I forgot his name. They were in the docu the Marley documentary. So he has half siblings, um, but he's the only full sibling for Sedella. It's only one you cheated out for him. You're good. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. In the Kevin McDonald movie, these a picture of Bob um, Norval and Bob's brother. Norval have a brother that have more picture. There's a picture floating around. Norval has a brother named Richard. Now, there's something interesting I found about Richard. I wish I could share my screen, but I guess that's for another day. Um, Richard, one thing that's interesting with the parallel between Bob and his, uh, not Richard, sorry, his uncle Robert Marley, is that that Robert Marley was also big in Kingston. And he died a few years before Rob, um, Bob was born. And so when Sadella says name, that Norval named Bob, his middle name, after his brother, that brother had died. And it was actually in the Gleena. So I have a Gleena clipping of that brother because it's interesting. A lot of the things that Bob was into, this brother paralleled, which would be his uncle. Stuff revisit in family lines, right? That energy came back again in one way or another. Novo ended up having a daughter they later found out. Yeah, I think he had other children. And uh, are we reading Don Taylor book? I think he was Bob's manager at one time. He talks about Rita and Cindy. Uh, yeah, I haven't gotten to Don Taylor yet. I think the, the, the Sedella book and the Rita book oftentimes don't get as much um, airplay, right? And so a lot of people hopefully will go and reread these. And then, you know, the Don Taylor, I've been hearing something... <laughs> <laughs> I've been hearing some things as well. So I haven't gotten that book yet. That one is in my Amazon cart, like just chilling in my Amazon cart. So Bob's paternal grandmother. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that she lived to like 94. Her name is um Bloomfield. Amy, I think. I have it written down. I have a little whole list over there, you guys. Because I do genealogy too, right? I literally do history re research. I was able to find four or five 
generations back through my own family. And so I've learned over the years and how to follow the paper trail. So if there is a marriage or death certificate, something that may either be in the Caribbean papers, whatever, I'm able to get it and, and source through it. And so definitely um, I saw that he had a grandmother, which would be Norval's mom who was living in Kingston. Earl, Norval got shell shocked and war became an alcoholic. I heard that little part, yeah. In the same movie, T Tante Amy said, says Norval met her when she was 16. Yeah, so the we're going to go into that story, but that's what they say. He met her when she was 16, and he was a friend. I'll say this. He was a friend of the father. I really want to read her words so that we can get it. Yeah, the Sadella book is Faith. I like your name. <laughs> Sadella's book is... um. It really goes into it. So if you haven't gotten it, I saw it out of print on Amazon, but you may get it other places. <laughs> yes, Don Taylor is the man in the movie that that Bob kicked down. <laughs> Andrea says, great work. Give thanks, Andrea. I want to open the panel. I want to actually hear you guys' voices. I, I like interaction, but because I went live on YouTube and I haven't gone live over here in a while, I don't know how to add people in the conversation. Hold well, on there. Let me see something. I don't know how to add you guys directly if you wanted to come up and talk. If, if you don't mind, let me click around a little bit and see. No, YouTube different. It's been a while since I've been over this side of YouTube, so I kind of have to. I usually stream from StreamRod, and I'm streaming straight from the app on YouTube, so I don't see how. Let me see something. Hold well, on there. Nah. It just shares the screen. Hopefully, guess what? If I work on it and I'll get to stream from, um, what do you call it there? Uh, StreamYard, then I know I can add people to the stream. Yeah, I have StreamYard. I just have to, I've been off of, off of YouTube for a while, you guys. I have a lot of content. I've been over, you know, um, what's her name book? Jasmine Guy's book with um, Tupac's mother book. I went through that book. Uh, I've, I've done some other stuff. So definitely look around the channel. Some stuff that's more serious, like my slave narrative work, but some stuff that's, you know, can make me cut up a little bit. So love the content. I, sometimes I don't understand, but makes me smile. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what other uh, social medias you have? Yeah, you guys can link me on, um, link me on Instagram or you can link me on Facebook. If you see any food pics, that's also me because I, I do plant-based cooking. So if that that's same me, Umuna Yisrael, you'll see me on all platforms. You're definitely prudent, man. We watch the play. Same name, same name, Imuna Yisrael. Do I feel like Bob has more kids out there? You know, there's a possibility. Um, I never did it. I like to say that. Uh, there's a possibility, you know, in, in his... um. And shout out to everybody who came in. In, in his... Again, he saw it with his grandparents. His grandfather, when, I don't think I read this story, but it's in Sadella's book, that the grandfather, when his mother was coming to town to live with Taddy, we have to go over the Taddy situation, which is Bonnie Wheeler's father. She, he, she left Bob at first, right? So he's still, he's seeing all of this. He's seeing the mere to them. His grandmother, his maternal grandmother died. And I say that, which is Sadella's mother. She died in childbirth, right? Um, when Sadella was 10. So there's a lot of things in the family that he would have lived with or heard about and that would inform his choices and his decision-making. Brizza says, I think they got married too young. It's a possibility because they never had nothing. Sharon, go greetings, greetings, greetings. Uh, I think they got married too young. She became the stable force for their children and Bob became a superstar and live the superstar life. She sacrificed herself to support him. And that's another thing. Nothing never come. If you want good, your nose have to run, right? And as you said, something was sacrificed in this situation. And, and as Brizard is saying, their relationship is sacrificed. She, something or someone, time, effort, energy, whatever it is, the prior relationship, we can see that something was sacrificed. And although people may not want to talk about it, they put it for us to talk about. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like people don't understand why did they let Rita hit him? If you saw the movie, why did they let Rita box Bob in the movie? Like when they did it at the street in a Paris and she all of them box him and everybody's like, well, why did she box him? In Rita's book, she asserts that they fought, like physically fought. When I read that, I was like, like they would get into physical altercations and her mom, 
his mom said the same thing. So that box, although it seems out of place, shows you that they had this very tumultuous relationship. You know what I mean? Uh, what? Bob telling cousin say I have 22 picnic is a possibility. Me never did it. <laughs> it's a possibility. Big up yourself, Lala from the UK. Big up yourself. What happened after? <laughs> Yo, y'all see if I be laughing. Sometimes I crack myself up, y'all. Listen, prudent mom said, what happened after Rita tell Auntie Doppy nearly to <laughs> Yo, and the Bob had to stay. But <laughs> it's not funny, but yo, I don't think she went further into that, but that Duppy part had me. How many people was like, when I first read, I said, we had just a while ago. Now, now, first of all, when Bob is walking and talking, I'll be like, yo, Rita, you know what, my night time. Did he tell her that the duppy actually attacks? Like somebody else in the comment section was like, no, it's a duppy that was in the back room and they used to have to bun it out. But why did the duppy jump on Rita? And why did the puss sound like it was calling Bob's name? Like, I have a lot of questions, but hey, that's just how my mind works. They said it's a box and bun in. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's a box of burning it. I mean, some people say that. Again, I wasn't there. Did she give him one bun? Okay, we have proof of the one bun. Did she give him plenty bun? We don't know. Me no know. I don't know. I try not to. You know, people say a lot of things. I'm just going off of what they said in the book and what I could substantiate. There's a possibility, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, Big up yourself from the UK. Tell her you're my sister. Yeah, that one is coming up. That one is coming up. I actually, I'm just going to finish finish it. And then what time now? 841. We'll see. If not tomorrow, then that one is going to drop. So somebody says Sadella, his daughter is not his. Nah, Bridget, she look like him. She look like him. I know this is not Maury Povich, but look at the eyebrows, judge. Look at the eyebrow. No, she look like him. Sorry about that one day. No, sir. The song turned your lights down low is crazy. Not a song. Not a song to the side chick. I mean, if you read the lyrics, that's what I meant to do, but I kind of got sidetracked to read Turn Your Lights Down Low. Bro, it's a modern day. It's a modern day. Yo, Bedrin, may I come over? It's not like, my love you to the ends of eternity. It's like, Bedrin, turn off the light and open the curtain because, you know what I mean? May I come for Stir It Up. It's just Stir It Up remixed to me. So Bob seems to be like, whoever he's vibing with at that time, that's who he's going to give this energy to. And it's like, boy, I can't say straight up again in my soul. Better me just say turn down the light. You know what I mean? It, it, it's kind of, to me, it's like it's remixed because it has some of the same essence of the songs that came before. <laughs> Don't be near the take our way. Him, hear him now? You see, you know, hear me tell you, say it always at my night time. All of a sudden, but it's a brazen doppy because the doppy jump on her while they were awake. You know what I mean? I'm Bob catching free leg. My goodness, get the water and fling the water, Parita. That was that was that was what Mystic said. It was talking, cracking up. That part was crazy. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. When I read you guys, I'm just read sharing with you guys how I read in my head. I see in 4D, 5K. That's how I see it in my head. So I'm just sharing that. Cindy's still jealous. I read her IG post. Tell me not being Miss Bob Marley's brother. Her. I mean, according to, you know, again, the mother, Sadella, that she wanted Bob to divorce Rita and they with her. Oh, true it is? Me no, no, me never did it. But that's what they, they assert, that she wanted to be Mrs. Marley. I think, again, like I said before, if it wasn't good to say that you were married, as time went along, you have people that is better for your image. And we see it today. You may have people today who they came up with the ride or die, and then when they got put on, they divorced them not calling no names. And then they marry somebody who was more socially acceptable. And I, th I guess they was doing it in the seventies too. New to the channel, Dr. Charles, give thanks. I'm glad you found one bun, one bun. <laughs> yeah, counting bun, what is it? Easter, Sunday, one and one bun and some cheese with little, with little pear and little butter. Yes, yeah, Sadella, they say it's his firstborn. Sadella really thought he was going to marry. Yeah, possibly. There's possibility that she, and in her mind, you know, they said that, and I was trying to look for the article. I saw a news article one time that said Beauty and the Beast. And according to Rita, they were supposed to be, before the shooting, um, 76, they were supposed to be making this movie, Beauty and the Beast. So I think that it was a power move to be with Miss Universe 
it was for press is, is a good press. It puts you into different spheres, um, into this socially accepted uh, relationship. But tell them you're my sister. What? <sighs> Turn your lights down low. What? No. I wish you guys could come on. We're going to have to stream yard this thing. Turn your lights down low isn't romantic to me. No, it the, the, turn your lights down low is set up yourself. Come here, come over for come check you. You know what I mean? That's what it sounds like to me. I mean, I like the song, don't get me wrong. You know, in the end the remix, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? They look more like Rita as kids, but now they look. I mean, it's in a them blood still, so you know, they're gonna look like what they are. <laughs> Stirring it up to make a bun. <laughs> Yo, y'all are funny. Yo, some of these comments, y'all have me cracking up in the comment section. I'm not even going to hold you. Rita had a picnic with Eitel in 84. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. I think afterwards, she was being consoled. And um, I don't know. She did She did have a, a, another daughter, I believe. Yeah, I don't know about the, um, the possible outsiders. The only one we know about is the one that she... Um, and concerning the Taki thing, according to the book, she didn't... She didn't, people like, how did he have her last name? The baby had the last name. According to the narrative, she didn't admit it for three years. So it took her three years to admit that this was Taki baby, according to the mother. So that's probably why all this time the baby is a Marley until in final that the baby is a Taki. So, you know, these things, these things happen. Rita and Sadella Book above said Cindy and her mother wanted to marry. Yep, they both did. Yep, Kevin Hart did that. He came to mind when I was saying that. Okay, I'm not Jamaican, so what's a duppy? A duppy is a ghost, um, disembodied uh, entity that often is associated with um, somebody who was living, and so a spirit, but not not one one that is not necessarily at rest. And so, uh, at the time that this 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 entity, this spirit is coming to the studio where he was sleeping because he didn't have anywhere to go. He was concerned that it possibly was coming through the cat, the dopipos. And so he was so afraid that Rita decides to say, yeah, go down at the studio because Bob cannot sleep here by himself. So she go down at the studio and then the dopey jump on her, a kind of fear narrative, right? And then they wet her up and then, then go back at the anthills. Oh, I'm sorry. They wet her up. They threw water on her, and then they then they went back to the aunt's house. So this duppy is a spirit um, that, for one reason or the next, came and was visiting them for one reason. But like I said, I think this whole singing at the graveyard situation that Bunny Whaler was talking about, like maybe he wanted an encore. Maybe whoever the duppy was wanted an encore. Let me see here. What were there? So hopefully that answered that. If Bob wanted to marry Cindy, he would have. That's facts. If, if she, every opportunity was there, yeah, Duppy is a ghost. Yep, no problem. Are you going to talk about Pascaline Bongo? I think that comes along. If it seems like I'm jumping, I'm trying not to. I'm trying to stay within a theme in the story. Um, and that's why in some places I haven't gotten there yet. And the theme is because one love, people like, one love is not a biopic. One love, a love story between Bob and Rita, Firebun for one love. So one love is like, this this uh, little thing that I'm doing is kind of following along the pieces that a lot of people are like, okay, is missing between these two. And the pieces that were missing is that there, there was a very complex relationship and then all of these things happened. And so that's kind of why I'm not jumping. Even though I went to Cindy for a second, I'm not jumping all around because they say a lot about their relationship in the book. And I kind of wanted to share that. Andrea Grant, welcome to the conversation. Nia, love your channel. Been following for, hey, what's going on? Get the likes up. You don't know. I tell them, we've been putting in work in these YouTube streets. So when I see certain comments, I just like let them roll off because, you know, the love and the desire for us to unite and to, to actually heal as a people so that we can really elevate is, is evident in the work. So I hope you guys avail yourself of all that has been shared over the years. I am I am only now realizing Duppy means ghost. <laughs> Bob in the interview was asked if Cindy was his girlfriend. He replied, yeah, I heard that. Shall I not then? I mean, if he's hanging out with his grandfather, his grandfather, Omaria, according to his mother, had a house, kind of like Hope Road. That was where he did his farming that all of the women then would be. So again, he saw this whole girl farm kind of behavior. And I mean, and it wouldn't have been new to him. They said, how many queens do you want? 
Me want all of them. How you going to take all of them, Bob? What about your brethren then? Why am them not need nobody to? Exactly. Cindy wasn't even Bob in the early. No. Remember he said in the song, Waiting in Vain? I don't want to wait in vain for your love. I don't want to. Okay, Andrea, one thing for sure, Rita was the right one to carry. Again, and that would be something that people would look at. If it was anyone else, would they have pushed them that way? And I think that because she had skin in the game, she was vested and she was there from the early beginning. And it was also her blood, sweat and tears. She wasn't only just fighting for his legacy. It was her legacy as well. Because all of them, ooh, all in the background, that's them. That's her. That's her leaving the baby with her milk dripping and going to the studio and late night. And that that's all her work, labor, time and effort as well. So it makes sense that she's going to be the one that's going to push it to where it needs to be. You know what I mean? Because this was beyond the relationship, just from the outside of looking. The one that don't claim the daughter born after the death. And uh, yeah, I think they said she was a daughter. There is a story in Sadella's book about, um, the I think, the last baby named Makita. Um, th that is the mother is a lady named Yvette. And he, he impregnated her. Uh, in the latter part in 1980. And then she dies like two days. I mean, two weeks after he, he, I mean, she's born two days after he died. My apologies. <laughs> Classic booty call. What? Did I miss something? What? The song? Bob knew what he was doing. And Rita said, I'm a reflection of you. I ain't mad at her. I can't. He pursued her for like three years. And it's after. Well, under. What's up with it? The thing jump. The thing jump. Get the likes up, peoples. Get the likes up. Okay. Hmm. He pursued her for like three years and it's after Chris Blackwell got in her head about him. It could be. It could be. It could be. Because again, according to Rita, they were supposed to do this movie, Beauty and the Beast together. You can see that there was going to be some type of move. You can see that there was going to be some type of move. Sorry. I shake something. Uh, Esther Anderson had a GoFundMe page to save her house. I think I saw something like that in passing. I always, I, I always wondered what Marcia and Judy thought about Bob and Rita. And you know, that part right there. I think they know way more than they're willing to share. I think so. I think for the, the protection of the legacy, and I can see why some people may be like, yo, stop talking about Bob. There, there, there's one thing to be the myth, and then there's another thing to be the actual, shout out, give thanks for the love, to be the actual, we can't learn from this, the myth. Learning from the actual person. There's people today that had these same experiences. These people today who use Bob Marley's behavior as a pattern, who he patterned his behavior after Solomon. But if you look at what happens to Solomon and in the end of his days, if you look at what happened to David in the end of his days, it hurt my heart when they're describing how he suffered at the end of his life. Everybody's talking about, you know, the legacy and the music, but the person, according to his mother, for the last six months of his life, he was in pain. It hurt me to read that. He suffered, right? And in that suffering, you're really thinking over your life and your experience and how did you get here? Because in that, he was very human in that space. And if we miss that, I think we miss a lot of the story. So uh, let me see. Yeah, man, Dopi nearly, nearly feel her up in the back of studio, man. Yeah, man, she, she preserved the legacy. She preserved the legacy. You can't fight her. People can't fight her. But guess what? If they didn't fight for that legacy to preserve the legacy, there would be none. Right? <laughs> Semi said you finally made it on time. Big up yourself. Just didn't know the term. Yeah, th they said it, it duppy. You want more tacky tea? Um, <laughs> the mother talks a little bit more. So when we get to Sadella, we're gonna get more on, on the tacky tea. I think I think the tacky was a real sticking pin um to the situation, but it was already happening before the tacky situation. Like they already had problems before the Taki. Taki couldn't did just come out and say, Rita, you want some Aita? He couldn't come in if there wasn't a gap, right? And so there definitely was a gap in their relationship. Cindy said she couldn't see herself with a Rasta man. Whole time the wedding picture said, yeah, he was cheesing. He was cheesing. I think at that time he may have been content, but as time went along, um, I think when he came to America and had different exposure, 
And when he came back, maybe because remember, there's another part of him that wasn't activated, which is the European side of him. Right. That part wasn't activated because not as yet, because why he's in the culture, he's in the country, he's amongst melanated people, he's doing, he's in Kingston, he's in Trenchtown. So when he sees another part of him, remember all in our DNA, we have coding and these codes don't turn on and off. Sometimes something has to trigger the turning on and off of our coding, our epigenetics. So when he has this experience and he goes to America and he comes back, maybe something was activated in him. I don't know. Maybe he tapped into Norval. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know. And another correction, even though I'm going to do it in the reading, is that people, and it's small, but I think it's valid, that people keep saying that um, his father died when he was 10. According, according to the record, not just his mother, according to the death certificate, his father died in 1957. So his father died when he was 12. And according to his mother, she brought him one time to see the father and the father was poor and indigent at the time and only gave him like two shillings, right? As an inheritance because the father didn't have anything. So what's up on the channel is the mother ends up coming to Kingston and we're going to read it, but I already put it up here. So it's all good. And she puts Norval Marley on bigamy charges. Bigamy charges. So I say, if they weren't married, how in the world did they, did she put them on bigamy charges? And it was big and bold in the Gleena. I think I'm going to get the thing and put it so you guys. Big and bold in the Gleena, Norval being inquired about bigamy charges. Sadella Booker. I don't know why YouTube, YouTube needs to be able to let you share your screen, Joe. Oh, wait, you can share your screen. Hold on. Pause. You can share your screen. I'm sorry, YouTube. I take that back. My apologies. I was making the most out of nice, but you can share your screen. So let me just share you some of the the um some of the uh things that i think are important to the narrative to substantiate what it is that we are reading okay so this i had found in the gleaner right and again because people swear blind say they're never married so if you could see that Okay, there it goes. You see this? This is a Gleaner article from 1956. Inquiry into bigamy, right? So this is where I talk about not false witnessing people. Hold on there. Wednesday, January 4th, has been fixed for a preliminary inquiry into a bigamy charge. Preferred against Norval Marley of 38 Whalen Park Road. The inquiry will be conducted by, and it tells you the magistrate for St. Andrew in halfway tree court. Marley is charged that having contracted a marriage 11 years ago with Sadella Marley of 11 St. James Road, he went through a form of marriage with Lena Scott on September 17, 1953 in St. Andrew. So what happens is he marries her, and I'll stop sharing. He marries her before Bob is um, born, he goes to Kingston. He's maintaining them for a while. Then he falls off. Next thing you know, she get word say him have woman at Kingston. So she go up at Kingston, go find them, find out say him have woman. She go to court and put him on bigamy charge. That is in the Gleaner. All right. And what happens after that? Stay tuned. So let's see here. Mm, all right. <laughs> uh, Grant made three sisters into sister wives. Yeah, he sure did. He was the sister wife before the sister wife show. And I have a lot of information on the channel about polygyny as well. That was a subject that I studied for many years. I know it made a lot of people upset, but I had to get a, a, some information on it because I think this, the way in which people are doing it and the way in which they presented it um, in different religion, in different spaces caused some kind of, you know, Contention. So I also have polygyny playlists. If you're like, well, what's your buddy I do with polygyny playlists? But tell us it. Yeah, it's there. Judah, what's up? Big up yourself. Tony says, hold on the people. And give thanks for the love. We can't, the thing jump. What do... I, you know, Tony, I don't know. I was looking to see if I could find... You know, some places... Some people have been archiving, like even if you're looking for your own family history, there are some islands that have been 
working with organizations to upload the archives of information that was before you had to literally be there, right? Cuba is not one of them. So I haven't been able to find a lot from Cuba. It may be about the relationship that Cuba has, but definitely if your people come from like Jamaica, Barbados, certain places, um, you even in Panama a little bit, you know what I mean? Certain, not, I'm not talking about Ancestry.com. There's another website as well that if you have some of the names, you can continue, you can begin to do a search and you never know. You might find some information on your great, great grandparent and, you know, and, and learn a little bit more about your family history. But I wasn't able to find anything on her in Cuba. So, yeah. It says, yeah. It says, I'm here listening and reading women bashing a woman that the man questioned publicly on. Which one that? I don't. Winter says you're listening and reading women bashing a woman. I, who who? Which one that? I'm not sure. All when Bob sick, the things them still at work. <laughs> I can't with food in mouth. <laughs> I can't. Call it a movie. Be yeah, that's what they were gonna call it. Yeah, that's what they were gonna call it. Marcy and Judy have all the tea. Yeah, yeah. I think they're still good friends. Um, to this day, and therefore, they, out of respect for that, they're just going to hold that. <clears throat> Bunny and, I mean, they left for reasons. That's what they said. I think according to according to what they, what they were saying, that he was into some, they were having to go to some places that they weren't necessarily comfortable with. And um, Bob was more willing to go and explore places to get the music or the message out. But in doing so, you're going to compromise something. You know what I mean? Uh yeah, that's interesting. I told you life is cyclical. Lady Ankh says they, they, Bob and Taki have the same birthday. Life is cyclical. Sometimes we are attracted to the same people. You, they may you be like, I don't know why you like this person because they they have the essence of somebody else or they have the vibe of somebody else. And depending on who it is, it could be anybody. You're attracted to them for that reason, and then you may not get what you're looking for when you get there, right? Oh no, <laughs> what well, you said, Bob? Did I give her the things? Um, I mean, you know, we, he could have, he would have. I mean, based on he stood on his principle, he didn't want to amputate his toe, and he was all within his rights, you know, to to not do that. I think she only had two children for Taki, according to the narrative. I think uh, when she only had two, according to what they said. Brian, yeah, this is a great topic. I'm glad we were able to have it. Would love for you to do a video about Bob's non-Jamaican baby mother. What, the one them from England? <laughs> she said, tapped into Norville. Maybe he came of America because Norville, like I said, Norville's brother is Richard. Now, why keep calling him Richard? Norville's brother is Robert. And Robert Marley, that picture that you see going around with a man that kind of looked like um, Norval and he had four children, that's the brother to my understanding. And the brother married in Kingston um, in the early 1900s and he had these children. So by the time Bob grew up, these children, although they're his cousins, they were older than him. Because I don't know what Norval was doing, why he didn't have no children that early on. But so he has cousins that's like could be his parents. You understand me? I say? So um, according to that, uh, his uncle was doing things. His uncles had, he was into cricket. Um, he had a, he had a, uh, what you call it shop. He had a sports goods shop. Him did a sell a rum. Him did a, he was doing all kinds of stuff. The uncle was all over the place. So thank you, Maureen. Before the legend book about Bob is super detailed about his younger years. Okay. In an interview, Salela said that Norbert took Bob and he was going, yeah, that's what they say. He took him, but he, he didn't send him to school. Um, We'll go over that when we get to that part. According to the narrative, she didn't find him at school, let's say. He was trying, I don't know what he was doing. He tapped into Norval. I want to tell y'all about Norval so bad, but I want to finish this Rita thing because Norval, Norval, Norval was doing the most. Norval was doing the most. Why his mother didn't like Rita? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, maybe she saw herself in Rita. I don't know if she didn't like her. I don't know what I, they they both born around the same time. Maybe they seem shared the same energy. I don't know. Lady Simpson says, I love your channel. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, I try to give facts. This is why when I was in error about the wrong Ito Stewart, I mean, not Ito Stewart, the wrong Owen Stewart, I had to correct it. So one, like for those who just came in, um, I was contacted to say that the picture on um, the baby daddy drama, that is an Ito, I mean, why I keep saying Ito? That is an Owen Stewart, but it's not the right Owen Stewart. So I changed it out and got the correct tacky picture because I don't want to misrepresent the information or this channel. So I had to print that retraction. Uh, and it's also, you're talking about worth ethic and it's true. Maybe they, Bob had a different worth ethic. Maybe he had something else to prove. There's so many things that motivate people um, that, you know, that we don't know and we don't see. Let's see. Oopsie. Rita lives in Africa. That's what I heard. She lives in Ghana, some say. So we 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 pray, we don't want any bad vibe to go to anybody. You understand what I'm saying? They left this for us to know, and so that at least we don't go forward and tell the next generation some madness that don't go. So the least we can do is when we're engaging the next time we we talking, and we can at least refer to something that's factual and not pass on misinformation, right? So because I well, even when I started researching, there was a lot of misinformation. I'm like. Which one is it? <laughs> no, him never meet him. No, him didn't meet him. He used to ride one horse. No, it was a donkey. I'm like, what is all of this? Where is the truth? You, you know what I'm saying? Where is the truth? So even though today somebody said to me, no, it's lie. Black man never marry white man. A white woman, they married. They married on paper. You you wouldn't be pulled up on bigamy charges if you if you weren't married. So, you know, there goes that. So even though Sadella is saying a lot of things in the book, I tried to cross-reference it, right? Like like her her father, you can see on the on the, you can see his name come up a lot. He had a number of children, and her mother alone had nine children, right? So I'll just say that as well. Sadella doesn't tell the full truth in her book. She basically abandoned Bob. I mean, there's some interesting things there. Uh, there's a, I put it in the, the chat, um, on Rita's page, she shots out Taki one year for his birthday. And that's where I got the official picture from so that I, I wouldn't have posted the wrong picture. So, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Naja, listen, anytime you need a lover, call on me, I'll be waiting. Anytime you need a love. Yo, why did Jack Cure, on another note, why did Jack, Jack Cure, what's up, bruh? We can't even hear Cure again because Cure did it again. Come to give you more again, yeah, yeah, yeah. New subscriber, we'll watch tomorrow. Just wanted to say love your accent and your accent live from Brooklyn. And so, Alexis, welcome to the conversation. We're going to wind down right now. Um, it is an interesting story. Like I said, there's so much to learn and <laughs> Yo, Prudent, <laughs> I'm not laughing, but Jack Cure, that was my guy, man. I don't know. Behind these prison walls, doing my faces, spending my time again. Come on, bro. We was rooting for you, fam. Come on. We was rooting for you. Nonetheless, we, we pray that <laughs> again. <laughs> like, we was rooting for you the first time. Like, how we get here again? How we get here again? You know what I mean? Cure again, yay. It's because you kept saying cure again. That's why. That's why, man. Sure. Anyway. Um, thank everybody for tuning in. Like, subscribe, and share. Mega finish. Don't do that video, yeah. And uh no, no sessa, no sessa, no sessa, no sessa. Oh, yeah. Which way where am I from? Um, I was born in. <laughs> I was born. <laughs> I was born in Brooklyn, New York. So I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and this is why if you hear me talking straight, you may hear a New York accent. But I slip in and out of Patwa because we, my parents, my whole family were like recent transplants. So like they just uprooted the island and then they dropped it in America. So we, we were from Bushwick. I, I'm a Bushwick. Um... If you know, you know, you don't know. And so the ability to move in and out of the conversation is 
just the whole culture, the whole growth, the whole everything is just a part of who we were growing up around everything. You know, when you go outside, it's America. But when you go inside, it's the Caribbean. You know what I mean? And so that's how it go. So I enjoy the books. Under the Bed, a real song. <laughs> Listen, y'all, I be like, I'm not even going to hold y'all. This is the... Sometimes me will sing some stuff I don't even remember. Me, you, them, I don't like. I don't even know if "Under the Bed" was a real song. Oh, you went to high school in, Cl in Crown Heights. Okay, okay, okay. BK in the building. Yeah, there's a huge Caribbean community in New York. A huge one. Like literally, if you go to certain parts in in New York, you would just think they just lifted up and just and just dropped it. Like everything is everything. <laughs> everything that you left is there. So. Um, yeah, if there's actually a, they now have christened off of Utica Avenue from Utica to Flatbush now, the Little Caribbean. Now on the map, it's Little Caribbean. Like you have, like you have Little Italy and you have Chinatown, you literally have Little Caribbean and trust me, <laughs> you understand? Flatbush, you don't know. Um, so yeah, everybody, I don't know the song Under the Bed. I have to go back and watch it because I don't know what I was singing at that point. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's, she said East New York is basically Jamaica. It is, it is, it is. Yo, they are. They sell manish water. They're my grilled jerk chicken pan aside at the road. Mana, mana, sun clash at nighttime. The other day I went to New York and I was like, why is the, why are y'all sound clashing at like two o'clock in the morning? Like, turn it off. Y'all are doing too much. Y'all are doing too much. Y'all are doing too much. But with that said, everybody, give thanks for tuning in. Um, <laughs> Uh, give thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, we're going to talk again. Maybe I'll do this like another time as well where we come and talk. If I do it on a stream yard, then you could come up. All I ask when we come up is everybody to be respectful to one another. As you notice, I don't curse. I saw one and two. Everybody else has been good, but, you know, try to keep it respectful in the comments section and do all that cursing and carrying on are really necessary. Don't know already. So let's be respectful to one another. You know, hashtag one love, Pam. Hashtag one love. So with that said, I'll talk to you guys again. And um, I will come back with Taki if I see any more Taki information. So, yep, everybody have a good day and good night.